AstraZeneca vaccine. Do you know anything, do you know anything about that? I know generally how it works. It is different from the others. I've been told that it's actually old technology. It is. Um, so uh, I will. I'll do my best to describe the differences. And, kind of, and and what I'll say right off the bat is there's pros and cons to each. Um, if you wanted more information on this, some from someone who might be considered more of an expert, I, I definitely encourage people to listen to Brett Weinstein and his his. Um, wife heather talk about it they, they do a really good job of diving into the details on this but i'll kind of give you the layman's version so as we kind of described earlier maybe this is a good this is a good opportunity to kind of retouch this a little bit the um pfizer moderna vaccines are an mrna approach so there's the there's what the mrna does which is codes for the spike protein that is naturally present on covid why is that protein important? The protein is important because that is the antigen that your immune system recognizes as a threat. So basically what you're telling your cell to do is to bruise just the part that tells your immune system there's something wrong and nothing else. And I th in, in my opinion, that's an ingenious way to go about it. Um, and the other aspect that we really haven't talked about is, remember we were talking a little bit about some of the challenges of CRISPR CRISPR technologies and introducing them systemically. Um, that's, and there's a lot of reasons why that's a challenge. In, in the case of what I'm used to, which is using viruses to introduce whatever you're trying to introduce. The problem with that is you really only get one time you, because your immune system recognizes viral vector as they're called as a threat. It neutralizes that threat and then it builds up defenses in the future. So the next time you're to inject someone with that same viral vector, it would be harder to get a a true systemic effect. So that's another technology that was in, integrated into the mRNA um, Pfizer Moderna um, vaccine approaches that is new. And what they're using is something called a lipid nanoparticle, LNP for short. Um, and when they're engineered uh, via bioengineers and others, they're sometimes referred to as micelles. And the closest analog in nature are, are liposomes or, or exosomes. And liposomes, exosomes, you can think of them as small capsules that their job is to transport um, uh, nutrients, proteins, whatever, you know, from certain places inside the cytoplasm plasm to the cell membrane and beyond. And their structure is just a, a lipid bilayer, exactly like our cell membranes are. Um, just in a smaller package. So what scientists have done is they've recreated those and they call them LNPs. And then inside of the LNPs, they put the mRNA and that keeps the mRNA safe. Um, that it keeps the RNA safe from what's, what are called RNases, which RNases are naturally present in your body. And when RNases interact with RNA, they immediately degrade them. So if you were to just inject someone with mRNA, basically none of it would get to the places it needs to go because of all of the RNAs is present. So what you do is you package them inside the LNP. The LNP keeps it safe. When, it, when the LNP interacts with the cell membrane, it's recognized just like a liposome or an exosome and then brought in tight inside the cell. It deposits its payload and then it gets to do what it needs to do. Really, really cool stuff. Leveraging some really you know, now that we know something about it, it seems simple, but some simple yet effective mechanisms to get the immune response that we're after. In the case of the Astra, but um, before I move on to AstraZeneca, let me talk about one of the cons. As I mentioned a few times so far in our podcast here, that RNA itself is very um, unstable. And so as you, as you may have heard some of the logistical challenges with deploying the vaccines is they have to keep them so cold and you keep them so cold to prevent spontaneous degradation. So that's, that's the downside of the RNA approach. So that's a good segue to go on over to the um, AstraZeneca one. Now the AstraZeneca one is more traditional. So their delivery vector is not an LNP, it's a viral vector. And as far as I can tell, they're using a AAV from that is related to chimpanzees. Again, we understand AAVs very well. We know how they work, generally safe. And so that's the, the, the delivery vector. And then instead of delivering RNA, 
they deliver DNA. Now, they're, what they're doing prior to that is they're engineering the AAV's DNA payload to only do specific things. So it's not like they're, they're delivering the DNA that would otherwise start creating more AAVs and get you sick. They've already kind of you know, bioengineered, modified that DNA strand to only do a particular thing. So the AAV gets to the cell membrane, deposits its DNA payload into the cytoplasm. And then, that, and then the difference here is it, the DNA payload is transported inside the nucleus. Mm -hmm. Now, here's where people will probably start to get a little bit um, concerned. Uh, you're inside the nucleus, there is many, many, many mechanisms that control the integration or repair of DNA. It is highly unlikely that a random strand of DNA will ever be integrated into your genome. So that's not really a worry. It has, there's so many reasons on why that is the case, but even just the way that D the DNA is coiled on itself within the um, nucleus prevents some, sort of, some, some types of integration. Mm. So I, I won't go too much into, into that. All I'll say is, although you are getting an exogenous DNA into your nucleus, which is proximal to your natural DNA, it is not being integrated into your genome. I can't say that enough. So once the DNA is now in your nucleus, now the same process that happens in nature happens. Uh, RNA polymerase interacts with your DNA, um, generates an R an, a messenger RNA. The, M the messenger mRNA is brought out to the cytoplasm. Uh, that, that, that now created mRNA basically is exactly what we were just directly introducing in the other models. It interacts with the ribosome and it, it creates the spike protein. You get the same exact effect um, that the other um, vaccines are giving. Now, some cons, interesting ones, actually. Um, so far, the effectiveness of that approach seems to be less. And my guess is that that's it's because there's more steps involved. And so you can expect some losses at each one of these steps. So because it takes more steps to get to kind of the same outcome in the AstraZeneca model, I think that gives more opportunities for things to go wrong. And so we're seeing a little bit of a reduction in effectiveness. What's really interesting though, is they, they, came, up, they uh, came onto this by accident. Um, in, I believe it was, uh, Britain, it was either Britain or Brazil, I forget which now, they made an error, a sort of serendipitous error, and they only gave some of their trial group half the dose. And in the cases where they only gave them half the dose, then they had 90% effectiveness, which is pretty much in line with the other two. Um, and what's interesting about that is that unlike the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, because the payload is DNA and it's in a viral vector, you, you essentially only have to keep it at um, not room temperature, but the temperatures that are easy to achieve in transport. It's cold, but not negative 80 degrees Celsius. Um, so they're much more stable. And so if we have a method that we, and here's the other kind of thing that's good about it is we have studied this, this type of vaccine for so long, we have a lot of data to back up what the downstream effects and any of the problems. So we're not really in uncharted, uncharted territory with this. It's, it's, it's more stable, easier to transport and cheaper. So AstraZeneca has agreed to not make any profits during the pandemic, so it's cheaper. And um, its effectiveness, we're still figuring this out, but it, it appears this effectiveness is capable of being in line with the other ones. So. Although I do, that, I do think that the other ones um, represent new tech that's really interesting and probably is going to be the way of the future, until we get an opportunity to do the actual process to do all the phase trials at their proper lengths, I would be more apt to take the AstraZeneca vaccine because we know it. We're not, we're not, we're not in uncharted territory with that one. That with the mRNA stuff, we are a bit in of an uncharted chip territory. But that being said, I, and I want to stress this, based on my understanding of the tech, I do think it's safe and it will end up being shown to be safe in long-term studies. Okay, so right. um, thanks for that. Um, for me, when people say that AstraZeneca is old tech, for me, it's like 
all the risks of that of the mRNA plus this DNA that's going into your into your nucleus. So in a sense, you've got one vaccine that's just the mRNA, mm-hmm. and you've got this other vaccine which people call old, which is old and safe. But you're getting DNA plus mRNA. So for me, that's twice the problems that can potentially happen. Yeah. So I, I don't think. Uh, um, yeah. So I think. I mean, I think you're right in to say that there's there's issues with both, right? I think at this point, our data suggests that the DNA being transported into the nucleus has been proven not to integrate with our genomes. So that's one thing. We have proven at this point that the AAV viral vectors are safe. um, And we understand this process. We've got a lot of data to suggest the general safety of that technique. The fact that the DNA ends up resulting in an mRNA that produces a protein is not really the dangerous part, in my opinion. Um, what's, what's the difference between that and the Pfizer thing? Pfizer is just skipping the middleman. It is skipping the middleman. It's using an analytic particle. And I do think that that's a pro. I do think that that's a pro. Um, however, in my opinion, I don't think that mRNAs on their own are unsafe. We have hundreds of thousands of mRNAs per cell that are constantly interacting with ribosomes that the molecule itself is not unsafe i don't um, see how it could be any unsafe any more unsafe than the uh, astrazeneca one given that the astrazeneca one has the same product right i mean just same out of name that comes out well the difference in my opinion the main difference other than the the pathways in which they get to the same result is the delivery factor so we really don't have a lot of of data long-term studies on the use of LNPs as a delivery vector. In my mind, they seem safe because they're really just a lipid, they're just, they're really just a man-made liposome. So there should be, there should be no danger. I mean, so, but, but we don't work with shoulds in science, right? We want to have no's. So we don't know yet because we haven't done a lot of long-term studies on that, on that, um, on that delivery vector. I, I do think that, you know, one thing that I wish we had more information on, again, let me preface this by saying, I don't think it's going to end up being a real issue. But one thing I would like to know more about is, you know, as, as we're sitting here now, our body is doing its best to keep us in a homeostatic range. And I, I know I've seen some of the comments from your, your page that kind of address this, but anytime we're essentially hijacking or encouraging the cell to make a particular protein for a particular purpose, we are at least taking a portion of the cell's ability to make proteins away to make a protein that we want to make that really has nothing to do with homeostasis. Now, many will say that the, 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 the cells have an ability to upregulate or downregulate regulate protein production, um, you know, in, in a big way. Um, but I, I mean, just as a, from an engineering, you know, just thinking about thermodynamics and entropy, everything, every mechanism has a finite maximum. So I don't, as far as I can tell, I don't think that anybody's really established what that is. So I just like to know, I mean, I I simply, you know, this type of information would be revealed if we weren't, if we didn't do warp speed. And it would be good to know what that is, you know, and I I do think that there's something going on because people are having some ill effects with the vaccines, typically on the second dose. Um, They're not severe, but I think we should, as a science community or just a community, do the due diligence to figure out why that is. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, I could talk so long on this stuff. But that's a really great answer. Um, 